Hello, today I wanted to make a video showing you how to take a slider or add a slider input to your React app. So this is going to be an input that you can uh, grab with your mouse or with your finger if you're on mobile and slide up and down for a number usually between 0 and 100 uh, for input. And I'm going to show you a few properties you can use as well to change the style of it and also the input, uh, input and output value types. So the first thing I've done here is I've started by uh, creating a, a React app using npx create React app, and that's where we're at now. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete some things here so that we can get started. So I'm gonna get rid of all this report web vital stuff. Uh, this is an index.js, so I don't need any of that. Uh, I can get rid of setup tests. Let's see, I can get rid of this. This uh, I'm gonna keep index.css and get rid of app.test.js and app.css as well. Whoops. Get rid of this. Um, isn't this perfect? So I'm going to go ahead and delete all those just to clear up some space here. Lovely. And then I'm going to go into app.js <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and change this to JSX in case I want to use the JSX uh, syntax here. Fantastic. So the next thing I'm going to do is install Prime React, which is going to be the library we're going to use to uh, get, grab this slider input. Uh, it's great. It's a great uh, library. I've used its, uh, its its inputs and other components as well for multiple different videos and multiple different projects. So I'll leave some links in the description below to the getting started and to the slider documentation. So to get started, we're going to go ahead and run yarn or npm install prime react and prime icons like so. Whoops, it's going to be yarn add prime react and prime icons. There we go. So while that's running, I'm going to come over to the get started documentation that I have up on my other screen and I'm going to grab a few CSS files here to import. Um, these again are in the getting started documentation they are under the styles heading and you just need to import them somewhere in your application. And they're all important there and save and this will just style them to make it look nice. All right, so this is done installing as well. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab the slider input and use state. So let's grab the slider, import it from prime react slash slider, like so. And then I'm also going to import use state just for the demo, well also to save the values um, from the slider. Fantastic. So let's get rid of all of this and get rid of the class name header and we're going to or app and we're going to add some padding to make this easier to see. So let's add 70 pixels of padding. Perfect. Um, I'm also going to add, let's uh, see, display, we'll do grid and we'll say grid, uh, oops grid template columns and I'll say repeat four and one R. I think it's one R, yeah. Uh, hopefully that'll work. So the first thing that we're gonna do is going to be a simple slider. So let's add a state here above the return value. So let's go const and we'll just do value one. That's fine. And but we're not going to set, oh, we'll set it to null actually. So we're going to set it to null. And then inside of our div here, we're going to create a new slider. And GitHub Copilot has already done it. I'm going to write it just so you can see as I write it. So we're going to do slider and we're going to set the value equal to value one. And we're going to do on change. It's going to be equal to a function that you're going to pass through the event. And with that event, you're going to set the value one to the event dot value, just like so. And then let's go ahead and close that slider tag and start the app. And it should show up there right on the front of the screen. Once the, uh, whoops, what happened here? Oh, can't resolve logo in app.jsx. All right, so I gotta get rid of this logo here and save and it can't resolve app.css. Get rid of that as well. Perfect. So now if I open up Chrome, you can see there's this big slider here. And 
this is changing the value of the state, so let's display that. I'm actually going to get rid of this grid, this grid styles. And perfect. We'll get rid of that. And let's add a div again for display purposes. We'll add a paragraph here and we'll show the value one. So it will change. So you can see the value one here. And as I slide this, you can see that value change. So that's the value that's set in that state. And that is pretty much the all you need to do to set up the slider. Um, this will follow some CSS properties of the parents. So if you want it to be maybe a fourth of the width, you can set the that width in the div. So I'll go ahead and do that now here just to just to demonstrate. So let's go style and width. And then we'll do let's see 25%. And there you are. So now it's only uh, a fourth of the page there. Great. So the next, the next, the next uh, property I'm going to go ahead and show you is going to be the step property. So let's go ahead and create an entirely new div here. So we'll do div, and we'll let it be the full width, and we'll add a p, and we're going to do value two here, which is not yet defined. So I'm going to come back up to my states, and I'm going to go ahead and define a value two, but this time I'm going to set it at 50, which is what the documentation does um, for, or sorry, this will be 20. That's what the documentation does for the step uh, demonstration here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set a slider. And we're gonna set the value equal to value two, obviously. And then we're gonna set the on change exact same as before, so set value two. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we just add step and then what you want your step to be. So what the step is, is basically how much you'll increment from each slide. So the default step is one, but if I want it to, let's say increment by uh, increments of five, then I'll do step five and go to close this and I'll show you what I mean here. So now you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and move this so you can see there's the value up top that's incrementing by one. And then the value down here starts at 20 as we set uh, in the state default. And then if I increment it, if I move it up or down, it increments by five at a time, and it won't increment by any less. All right, fantastic. That was super easy. Uh, I'm also going to show you decimal, so you can add decimals um, into your slider value here. So let's go ahead and, again, we'll set the state first. I'm just going to go ahead and set it to, to zero this time. It uh, doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go ahead and set a new div here. And... We'll let it we'll let autopilot fill in some of the, the values here with the uh, paragraph. I'm going to do a new slider and we're going to do value is equal to value three. We're going to do on change just like before. And then this time we're going to set the step equal to decimal. That's all you need to do. So I'm going to maybe if you want your uh, step to be 0.1 so you can go any decimal um, with one decimal place Go ahead and save that and now you can see as I move this there's one decimal place there now if I want to let's say have two decimal places uh, I would do 0 0.01 for the step and again this will allow you to have two decimal places for your slider so it really is that simple. Um, Primary Act library makes it super easy to uh, work with these sliders. And then there's going to be two more different properties I want to show you. So here's the next property. We're going to, again, add uh, another value here in the state. But this time it's going to be a little different. So we're going to set it to an array of 0 and, say, 50 to start. So this is a range value. So we're going to have... Uh, the beginning of our range and the end of our range. So make sure the beginning of your range is going to be set lower than the end of your range to start. Now I'm going to go ahead and save that and I'm going to come down here under this value 3 div and I'm going to again let autopilot fill in the display value and this one you set pretty much the exact same to the very first original um, slider except you set range equal to true, but you don't even need to set it equal to true. You can just set the property range there, and it will know that it's true. 
go ahead and save that. And now when I come back, you can see uh, that's displayed weird because uh, let's let autopilot do, let's see. We'll say uh, value one, perfect, just like this. Value four zero to value four one. Uh, that should display a little better. Eight to 50, great. Now I can say 20 to 50. And again, this is just a range slider as you'd expect. Uh, I won't let you go take the, it won't let you take the max value and put it under the min value. So it works exactly how you expect and it works great. All right, so the last, the last property I'm going to show you is it's just going to be a vertical, vertically displayed slider here. So if I set div again, I'm gonna go ahead and let autopilot set the last state here and let's let it fill everything in for us just because this is all very repetitive uh, all right slider oops slider value five on change set value five exactly like we expect uh, we don't need the min value what we need is an orientation value and this orientation is going to be set to vertical like so and if i save that and go back there you are there is a vertical slider. Awesome, so that really concludes the, the demo here. I'm gonna leave, again, the links to the, um, to the documentation in, in the description, and also throw this up on GitHub and leave the source code in the description as well. So I hope this video helped. If it did, please leave a like and subscribe.